a superbike. Mountain bikes can be pretty spendy these days, carbon this, titanium that. It's actually not that hard to spend 10 grand on a bike. Some of the biggest manufacturers have off the shelf superbikes. Or you could go down the boutique brand route and have something like a Pole, the Finnish brand that builds some of the world's most high-end enduro bikes. Whoa, 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 premium Neil. You don't have to spend a fortune on a mountain bike. This Voodoo Hoodoo cost me £375, second hand, but it's a really cheap, proper mountain bike. I didn't say you have to spend the money, but if you've got it, this Pole stamina costs about £8,000. This is my Pole stamina in the EN build kit, which comes in at 7,950 euros. However, I've added some pretty special upgrades to this. The Trick Stuff Duratisma brakes and the SRAM access gear in. Almost up to their top of the line LE build kit now. And this bike now costs about 9,000 euros or about 8,300 pounds. Well, supercars are lovely to look at, but you do hear about repairs and servicing costing tens of thousands of pounds on Ferraris. What about living with that superbike? What happens when the drivetrain wears out? Then you have to cough up. This SRAM XX1 cassette costs about £400, $450. More than my bike. Yeah, but lots of smiles per pound. <laughs> there better be. Anyway, let's go and see the real difference between your superbike and my cheap bike. You're on. These are racehorses, not show ponies. Not to be looked at all day through your Dior sunglasses. What? <laughs> Dior? More like SRAM access. I meant D-I-O-R. Idiot. Well, let's start with a completely arbitrary measurement because why not? Let's see what you actually physically get for your money. Price per kilogram. So the Voodoo Hoodoo, it's an entry level mountain bike with a budget suspension fork, costs 600 pounds new, weighs 14.35 kilograms. That is 41 pounds per kilogram. But this second hand bargain is 375 pounds. That comes in at 26 pounds per kilogram. Well, the Pole Stamina is 180 mil full travel CNC aluminium enduro race machine where capability is more important than out and out weight. So it's not designed to be super lightweight. Comes in at 14.7 kilograms. Interestingly, they're so close in weight, but not in capability. Hang on, you don't know that yet. 561 pounds per <laughs> kilogram. What? Let's go back to the car comparison. A Ford Fiesta costs 14 pounds per kilogram. A Ferrari 812 Superfast, well that's 153 pounds per kilogram. But there are a few more kilograms, the Ferrari. Round one goes to the cheap bike. Round two, desirability. Yes, bikes are about riding, but lots of us love to sit back and admire our fine steeds. But let's test out the desirability of each bike by parking them outside a cafe to see if the general riding public fancy an ogle as well. An easy win for the superbike. Now, please go away. That's my bike. That makes it one each for the cheap bike versus the superbike. Practicalities. I dare you to ride to the shops and leave it outside or even insure it against theft. I got a quote, the Voodoo will cost me 71 pounds a year. Yeah, this 520, but it doesn't leave my side. Uh, what about cross country ride one weekend, dirt jump in the next, pump track, bit of bike packing? Well, this is an enduro bike. Uh, it can run three bottle cages, and this is designed for proper mountain bike riding. You could race an EWS, go to Whistler bombs and runs, do an epic ride around a Welsh forest. All right, whatever, let's call it a draw. Two each. All right, sprint and brake test next. Sprint first. Are you ready with those cool legs? Three, two, one, go! Oh, take that, posh boy. Anyway, brake test next. Good luck. Don't mean it. All right, brake test. You ready? Three, two, one, stop. What the hell? We've both got hydraulic brakes. Yeah, but these are trick stuff. The cream of German engineering. Uh, with a one year waiting list, if you do actually want to buy them for 450 euros a brake. 900, yeah, yeah, but come on, <sighs> have a feel. No one said excellence is going to be cheap. And I've got proper enduro tyres. A deadly combination. What? Another draw? Could the cheap bike possibly take the win? Trail performance. Hang on a sec. 
are we comparing apples to oranges here? Your bike's got 180 miles travel front and rear. This is a hardtail. Pa! Technicalities. All right then, let's start with something I know this bike should be good at, the pump track. All right, you ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh, go on then. I thought you were a racer. Hardtails are the pump track masters and the hardtail takes a 1.3 second win. Now it's up to the next challenges for the pole to have any chance of winning in the overall. Right, a timed climb. Uh, now my geometry is designed to get me up the hill nicely to bomb back down. Weights are about the same, but my 180 mil of travel and my big enduro tires aren't gonna make it that easy on the pole, eh? but they will pay dividends, just you wait. Getting the excuses in already. Right, watch this. Faster again on the climb, but we expected that one. Now there's a 7.3 second lead to the cheap bike, the Pole got a lot of work to do on the time descent. Well, capture, something go wrong? Whatever. Anyway, time downhill now. You're right, what are you doing? Shut it. Ooh it looks pretty serious and fast. Anyway, I'm not ready yet. Right. But now the superbike, the Pole, is in its natural habitat and it takes a stunning win on the descent. 12 seconds over the hardtail and on a short downhill, that is an emphatic win. All right, you win. Ooh, but yes. the cheap old hardtail is better for some things. For a quick blast around the woods, a lap of the pump track, some jumps, riding to school, commuting. It's pretty mental. This bike is actually better for some things. So actually, how much better is your nine grand bike overall? Yep, not taking anything away from the hardtail. Admirable stuff. And actually, Blake raced Mega Avalanche on a hardtail. Possibly his stupidest idea ever, and that's saying something for Blake. But this, you know, it's designed for different things. We're talking about racing multi-day enduro stages, uh, EWS races, this is the bike. Hardtail, you're just not gonna be able to do that. This thing blows it out of the water there. There's a wealth of experience that's gone into this bike, the R&D, the pro rider feedback. It's all about designing the bike and actually the performance of it. And that's where super bikes are judged. Yes, you need deep pockets for this bike, but you also need the trails to necessitate it at home or enough cash to get you to a Whistler or Madeira. Then happy days, it's great. Hardtails are great, especially cheap ones. They're responsible for introducing so many people to the wonderful world of mountain biking. But if we're talking about racing in durable series downhills or anything like that, then they're not quite up to the same job. Obviously, there's a big gap in the middle where most people sit for how much they spend on their bikes. And the benefits increase quite quickly from 300 pounds up to 3,000 pounds. But after that, the increments seem smaller for every pound or dollar. That doesn't mean it's not there. 
For some people, the humble, cheap second-hand hardtail is just a ticket. It's fun, it's not all about the bike, and we're all in the mountain bike club. Well said, Neil. Thanks, Neil.